Hello and welcome to another episode of Film Freaks with a Z, the podcast all about movies. Every episode is about a single movie, and we'll get to this episode's movie in a little bit. But first, we're going to go ahead and in- introduce ourselves. I am um, Ferret Loaf, and I'm here with Greedy Face. Hey, Mation. I don't know. De- Detective Ray, I guess. <laughs> And we have a special guest on today. Where is he at? I am Jack's obsession with Blue, a.k.a. Callus. Welcome back Hello. to the podcast, voice. Callus. Welcome oh, back. Wow. <laughs> yes, very nice to be back and very nice to meet the person that replaced me. Hello, Ray. My name is Hello. Callus. Oh my gosh, I've never met you before in my entire life. Hi. <laughs> Callus, what? Hi. Oh, yes. No, it's it's just callous, not just callous. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought it was just callous, not just callous. <laughs> You'll get it. Yeah, eventually. Yeah, well, nice to be back. <laughs> how are we all doing today? Uh, better than some of the get people in the movie, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Yikes. I feel like some of the people in this movie today, but it's just from exhaustion. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> mm, same. So, Getting it close there, Tay. <laughs> no one has to know. Yeah, we were, I was just going to roll off of it without even mentioning that Tay literally joined yeah. while I was doing the intro. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, who, who, what was that doinking? <laughs> well, don't worry. We're in streamer mode on Discord, so you can't hear the doo doo. Oh, yeah. Never mind. No one had to know, Callus. <laughs> causing wow, trouble. Causing chaos already. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of chaos, great segue, Greedy. Oh, Callus, why don't you go ahead and introduce the movie for today? Sure thing. Well, the first rule is I'm not supposed to talk about it. So, goodbye, right, everyone. Well, nice. Yep, thanks for having me. All right, see you guys. Wow, that's great. That's a good episode. <laughs> yeah, nice and sweet. Nope, I suggested a Fight Club. Uh, came out in 1999, directed by David Fincher. It stars Brad Pitt, Edward Norton, Meatloaf, uh, Zach Greiner. Um, this list is very out of order. What's the guy's name from Jared uh, Three Seconds Summer? Jared Leto, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Helena Bonham yeah, Carter. That's exactly who you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the quick synopsis of this movie is an insomniac office worker and a devil may care soap maker from an un- form an underground fight club that evolves into so much more <laughs> so i would like to first of all ask um whose first time watching this was it me mine Good this evening. was my second time my second time Taste. as well Oh, my second time. All right. So you got two so, first timers, two second timers. Nice. So, greeting Yemi, was this movie at all what you expected it to be? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people don't know that this movie has a lot more to do about soap than actual fighting. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot to. It has a lot more to do with um, mental disorders than yeah. fighting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. Really. Um, I, so, for yeah, good measure, of... I, I, I did watch most of the movie a second, uh, twice. I watched it again afterwards because I oh, wanted yeah. to see all the little things I could pick up on from the twist in it, but we'll get to that later. Yeah, that's going to be a great topic of discussion later on. But for now, yeah, let's, uh, speaking of mental disorder, let's talk about that. Let's talk about, um, like, the fact that he had, this whole thing started with him getting insomnia. Yeah. Um, and then like him like trying to cope with it, and then like, finding other support groups of other people suffering from different things. Like, what do you guys think about that whole ordeal and like his way of um, basically leeching off of other people? Yeah, it was an interesting place to start the movie, and I was yeah. wondering how we were going to get to the Fight Club aspect of it. I guess, yeah. <laughs> but I was uh, go ahead, go ahead, you got mine. I will say it's a bit of a slow start with getting into. 
his character and, and all that stuff. Um, I was feeling the runtime for the first, like, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes. Um, yeah, there's like the first fight doesn't happen until like the first 40, until like 45 minutes. Yeah. 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 But I, I would, yeah. I would say like, it doesn't really start getting super interesting until, um, he meets up with, with, a uh, 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 Taylor, Tyler, Tyler, Tyler. Sorry, Tyler. Yeah. Well, the pacing definitely is weird, too, because it starts off and he starts going to all his support groups. And then suddenly it just cuts to him, like, doing all this traveling for work. And it's like, yeah, where's wh- that time what? gap? Yeah, what happened? Yeah, it's like, what? Where does this? How does this fit in? What's the importance of this? I also yeah, want to say, I'll... like, the opening credits. <laughs> what a weird opening credit sequence where it's like the inside of his body and there's like blood yes. vessels and, sh- and stuff everywhere and like I was I literally paused the movie and checked to make sure I was actually watching Fight Club I'm like what am I watching Osmosis <laughs> Jones here like what the hell <laughs> ah. oh it's funny you mentioned that because there's a funny gag for the I used to own the Blu-ray I actually watched it on DVD I don't know what happened to my Blu-ray but I also have like the DVD from way back in the day but the Blu-ray on it like if you put the disc in you know if you put the disc in and like the menu pops up, the menu for um, a Mandy Moore movie pops up. I forgot what the name of it, but like you see the menu pop up and you're like, wait a minute, did it put the right disc in? <laughs> and like, mm-hmm. like oh, if you wait a few trippy. seconds, then it changes to like the actual, you know, the Fight Club menu. Interesting. I think What a Girl yeah. Wants or one of those. A different kind of movie, I don't know. Huh. From back in the day. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it's just a funny gag. Yeah, I was. Uh, it's- watching this movie in the first like 25 minutes i was like am i watching the correct movie and only the real <laughs> listeners will know i messed up prior and i was like okay wait a minute so i literally paused the movie i looked in the discord like i was like okay fight club but we didn't have the date or anything i don't think and i was like okay so i went to like the youtube channel of our uh, our youtube channel and listen to the end of the episode again i was like okay it's directed by the same guy it's 1999 i was like this is the movie i was like okay this is like i was literally like co- like concerned i was watching the wrong movie for like the first like yeah. 25 minutes i was like i'm not gonna pull this <laughs> crap again i was like no way yeah it's, it's a very odd opening not just opening credit sequence but just kind of an odd opening to the movie in general yeah and um yeah it just it doesn't really get going until like that that part where he, yeah. his house his apartment condo blows up and he he uh calls tyler to meet him and that's kind of where it starts to get interesting i mean, well I, I guess when he meets him on the on the plane that's kind of where i started to get interested that uh mid-air crash scene was kind of cool too yeah kind of some bizarre cg in this movie speaking of that crash <laughs> sequence uh there's a lot of things that like they zoomed in on that was like cg and it just kind of looked like cg (laughs) i think i think art yeah i think i think stranger than fiction did the same thing where like it panned across something and it's kind of just doesn't seem real (laughs) and i think this movie did it a lot i think that might just be david fincher's style but it is yeah a lot of this movie was like done on purpose to like kind of kind of give you like a off feeling you know like you know how the movie starts you hear like two seconds of classical music and then it like you hear the the record scratch and then it turns into the techno it's like everything just kind of like i guess setting expectations and also the way he shot so many scenes with like the lighting behind the characters to where like you just see mostly shadow on their faces like there's you guys notice how like the, he shot so many yeah. of the scenes like that yeah it definitely sets like a mood like it definitely sets the tone for it I'll be honest, like, there are, there were a few parts in the movie, like, especially with his mundane life and just, like, the fact that he can't sleep and he's trying to do something different and, like, um, standing up to his boss. It, I kept thinking of Office Space. <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <laughs> I also thought of that movie, too. <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. But I was like, wow, yeah, this I is do, definitely do. a case of the Mondays for a while. You should suggest it next. Hey. It's not my turn, but I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah, me should suggest it next. I I have something ready to go, locked and loaded. Aww. Office. Space. Damn it. <laughs> I'll just be like, all right, Greedy can suggest. It. 
<laughs> yeah, just go down the line. <laughs> Tay's gonna be your best gu uh, best guess because uh, he usually does it Tay, last I'm minute. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. I had one picked out already, but I forgot it. So <laughs> <Yeah>. maybe <laughs> office space. Eh? Cal, just just message Tay office space at eight o'clock <laughs> next uh, in in about three weeks or four weeks. <laughs> in four weeks. Six weeks? So maybe more like six. Yeah. How does time works? I don't know. Mm -hmm. He's going to forget that and be like, why is this palace guy messaging me office space? <laughs> <laughs> I know it even, make it even more confusing to send a, a stapler <laughs> emoji. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, a film free staple going way off topic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trust me, that hasn't gone away. <laughs> Not at all. Yes, I've kept up with the episodes. Although I haven't listened to the last one just because I haven't watched oh. her yet. I need to watch that movie. Oh, you gotta. It's so good. <laughs> so good. We'll do. We'll do. We were off topic because we can't talk about Fight Club, so. You know. <laughs> yeah. Just stalling yeah. for the next 40 minutes. <laughs> so. Um, go ahead. Nah, go ahead. You first. <laughs> I. I want to get you guys' opinion on the girl. I can't the I can't think of her Marla. name right now. Is it Marla? Marla. Like, yeah, yeah. like, I kind of get her purpose, but I don't at the same time, because at one point she's, like, just wanting to join that club, and then she's banging Tyler, and then she's trying <laughs> to bang this dude. I was just like, what is the point of her? Like, what? What's going on? Like, I get it. She's just trying to cause chaos in their lives. I don't know. She, it just seemed weird at points. Yeah, yeah. The chaos really... isn't necessarily being caused by Marla. Yeah, she's not really a cause of it. I mean, I know a lot of it was like uh, his insomnia parts, but it, I don't know. It just seemed like she was had a bigger role than she needed, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I feel like she was kind of the glue that binded the two characters together somehow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I, I, I haven't really thought about it much, but you know, the two sides of the coin where Tyler is like, I don't know if he's just kind of using her or whatever, but he kind of lets lets her into the house and all that stuff. And then on the other hand, um, the narrator is what he's called on Letterbox for some reason. <laughs> What's his real name? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's what he's he's that's called. Just what he's called. Like, they never say his movie. Well, yeah, he does have a lot of different names. Um, but yeah, the narrator. Yeah, we What's called the narrator? Real name. Edward or a narrator, Martin. or Jack. Okay, you can just call him Jack. <laughs> Jack or whatever. But uh, he, the, he's the other side of the coin where he doesn't want anything to do with her. And I think that when they introduce Marla, I like I love the dialogue that he has inside his head where he's like, "I know that she's just a mirror of me, but she pisses me off" or something like that. And I just I love the the yes. dichotomy. Is that the right word of the two characters? Um, kind of going down the Marla. same path essentially where they're using these counseling meetings to get something different than what the people at the counseling meetings are there for yes yeah and i think that every yeah. time they show her like when she's she's doing like the, the smoking thing and she's got like the smoke coming out of her mouth i think that it's shot really well and it really exemplifies the character perfectly yeah i have to agree with you there too the entire time yeah, I saw them like going to different support groups, I'm like, man, this guy needs like actual therapy for his problem. Like, <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> it's the '90s. Didn't he go to a doctor? He did go to a doctor. He, he, did. At the end he of the went movie. to a yeah. doctor, not like a psychiatrist, he, though. That doctor was yeah, a, kind of a jerk, though. Yeah, the doctor yeah, kind yeah, of brushed him off. Like, you know? like, oh, doctors would would definitely be like, oh yeah, no, insomnia is a problem. Let's let's get you some <laughs> sleeping pills. Yeah, <laughs> exercise <laughs> and sleep. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, but yeah. he said he didn't want to prescribe him sleeping pills because he needed, like, real natural sleep, is what he said. Yeah. So I don't know if that's yeah, a real thing. Yeah, which you, if you have insomnia, you can't get. They they know this. They would have totally... <laughs> hell, I I have pills to help me sleep because I have insomnia. Yeah. Not all prescribed doctors are by a doctor. <laughs> yeah, he would have been better enough going to uh, Dr. Mario. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I I, um, I kind of get why the narrator doesn't go to... I, I mean, it is the 90s, I guess. And this movie is very... 
I don't know, macho forward, I guess you would say. Yeah. So oh, he's essentially, he, yeah. he solves it in the only way that, ev eventually he solves it in the only way that he can, you know, really express it, which is the, the fight club aspect. Um, he was doing pretty good at the uh, counseling sessions, though, you know, like, I mean, the real reason, I mean, I guess Marla is another reason she's there is to push him into the direction of not being at the council meeting. So he has to find yeah. a different outlet. Well, where shall we go from here? Do you I guess guys... we can start talking about like when the fights start happening, when like when the club started forming. Yeah, that's actually what I was about to bring up. I was about to say, do you guys feel like they showed enough of the fights, like the fight club in, in general? Yeah, I, I, I feel I like so. they started off a little bit scarce, probably because mm -hmm. there's not much going on, but... Um, I think it was like towards the middle or even more towards the end. They they really started showing more of the Fight Club, and I thought they did a like a good job building it up. And because they kind of left you wanting more in the first half, where it's like I kind of I want to see more of the fights, and then they show more of the fights, and it it's getting pretty brutal by the by yeah. the time that the yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Ends. literally kills a man. <laughs> well, some, he, he's not dead. Pretty intense. He doesn't like, kill him, but like... yeah, he's still alive. He almost. Jer that was Jared Leto. He deserved Jared it. Jared Leto, yes. <laughs> he just <deserved it. laughs> I mean after even, after he played the joke 24 years later <laughs> or not 24 <laughs> go ahead yeah close enough 20, 20 <laughs> 25 years later wow but I yeah, just I, realized uh, Jerry Leto is angel face you you set me up yummy I didn't set you up at all. <laughs> I, the name I the up, name I gave you was dirty what? Dog. what? I, I you didn't even use the name that I gave you. <laughs> you said greedy face, didn't you? Yeah, but then I was like, use this other one instead, and then you used greedy face anyway. So <laughs> it's, it's that was you. I was all don't blame me. I gave you two very good options. The second one even better <laughs> with uh, greedy soap. Greedy soap. Yeah, I, um, the cinematography in the fight sections was great, and it felt pretty real. <laughs> it really yeah. felt real. Um, now, Greedy is our resident uh, doctor here, or, or close to it. Um, really? <laughs> how many of those people would actually have died or suffered major injuries uh, from those very scenes, Greedy? Um, the only one that might have died is the one I mentioned uh, well, kind of mentioned where he's literally getting his face pounded in. Yeah. Um, that's the only one that would have probably got close to be what, being deaf. Um, but what about yeah. when uh, Edward Norton gets like slammed headfirst into the concrete over yeah, and over cool. and over? Yeah, that was insane. Yeah. Yeah, there was a couple scenes uh, where yeah, they showed like about that heads too. being slammed in the concrete. I'm like, that guy either either dead or knocked out or. In a coma, <laughs> and then he just won't. You know, they just get up and they're like, "All right, good fight, man. <laughs> good fight." But there are a lot of parts where they they're like, "It's like, okay, you wouldn't look normal the next day." Like they, I know that it's probably yeah. not like portrayed like that. I know there's probably been some time between them, but um, I don't know. There's just one one thing I picked up like thought thought it was weird about the fights is they had perfectly fine faces the next day. I mean, it was like what. Oh, wait, a lot well, of them no, have no, like, bruises I mean, on their faces, though. That's the whole reason yeah. why, when the narrator goes out into the world, like he tracks down Tyler because he sees the people's beaten up faces and stuff. Yeah, you always said, "Look at my face. I'm a member." Yeah, yeah. That's a lot true. of people have like beat up faces afterwards. That was one of I, 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 I every time I it seemed like uh, not Tyler, who's uh, Brad Pitt's face Brad, seemed yeah, fine Brad every Pitt's. time. Well, yeah, I Brad mean Pitt that feeds Tyler. into the twist of the movie. There, greedy. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> is true. <laughs> but yeah, I, that was one of my favorite sequences is when um, the narrator's just out in the world and he's just beating all these people who were, joined the club, essentially. And he knew they joined the club because he either saw them or, you know, they, they had bruised and beaten faces and stuff. So they had like a little montage after like the first set of fights or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know one thing that what? I found really interesting about the movie is the uh, like the sense of uh, duality between you know Tyler Durden's beliefs and like his actions, because he's always talking about you know like let's go out and break some rules and stop living this way and you know just you know be your own self. 
but then he creates you know fight curl up and then eventually project mayhem that's like based on such rigid rules that you know must be enforced yeah and then at the same time he wants like people to be free and you know to stop being a slave to corporate and socialist and i mean uh coming wait what is it <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, essentially, he, yes. essentially, he starts the club, and everyone just becomes him. Basically, yeah, like he wants people to be free from like from being slaves of their lives, but then he recruits people and turns them into slaves. Yeah, like everyone <laughs> who joins like the club so gotta funny. get the chemical burn. Everyone who joins the club gotta fight. Everyone who join is joins the club, uh, you know, doesn't have a name, and yeah, it, yeah, it, he he essentially makes like a hundred clones of himself by the end of the movie. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> or more. I mean, they are in so many cities. Yeah, I guess <clears throat> I guess we could talk about the twist a little bit here, but um, it really all clicked when the narrator found those plane tickets. Um, and he started, like, chasing around he, what he thought was, was Tyler, right? Um, but Is he that when he you, was just, like... That's when I pieced it together there. right there. Mm. Um, and the one thing that I would like to say is a lot of movies that have big twists like this one, the writing isn't necessarily on the wall, but you get little hints throughout it. And I don't feel like this movie had enough hints for me to find it believable at times. Um, there was a couple sequences where it's like you see the CCTV monitor and you know, the narrator's being dragged, and it looks like he's being dragged by an invisible man. And at that yes. moment, I'm like, is this, like, a supernatural thing? Like, is Tyler actually, is he actually dragging him, <laughs> you know? But then there's other times where I'm like, oh, it definitely, you know, you, it, it's almost like there are parts where, I don't know, the director or the writer really thought about the context and everything. And then there's other parts that kind of just seemed lazily done. Like, not lazily done as in, like, the script writing is lazy. Like, lazily done as in, like, you know, they have Tyler and the narrator interacting and they're both separate and there's people around and they're not acting, they're not like weirded out by the fact that the narrator is talking to himself or whatever, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I, I feel like they needed maybe a little bit more of that. To, to talk about an example that's kind of good, um, Call of Duty Black Ops 1 has the twist where, you know, Reznov is in Mason's mind and they do a good job of like showing like, okay, when Reznov's around, no one else is there. You know, the one guy asks why Mason is talking to himself at, at one point. And um, I felt like, you know, that is like a good hint as to what's going on. Whereas with this movie, when I was rewatching it, I was trying to look for those minute details. There really wasn't any minute details that I was picking up on that was like, oh, well, you know, of course that makes sense now. There wasn't really anything like that because when Tyler's there in the scenes, it's like he's a real character. It's like he's there with the other characters. So... I don't know if anyone else feels that way, but I felt like the twist is good, sure, but the buildup and everything around it doesn't make sense when I rewatched it. Yeah, yeah no, I it's like go ahead, Tate. Oh, sorry, yeah, I, was, I totally agree. Like the scene where they go after the like police commissioner in the bathroom, like you see Tyler grab him, and then you see narrator lock the door, and it's just like that. That doesn't did fit. No, and did no one actually lock moments. the door, or you know? It's... Yeah, I was like, there's a bunch of little moments like that where it's just like, eh, yeah, I agree. Hey, could have been done better, giving us a little more hints. Yeah, that was that was like my major thing about the movie, especially when I was rewatching. I'm like, ah, there's just nothing to like really glue it together to make it a good, like a really good twist. Like it's a good twist, sure, but it's not it's not like logical and it's also not believable unless there's like a supernatural element going on where Tyler actually is yeah. like there in some way, you know, I, it just, yeah. Kallus, what do you think since this is your pick? I don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> so that yeah. CC, CCTV footage where he's like being dragged on the floor, that's the only scene that is like, just bothers me. That just makes no sense. But like there's, they actually, I found that they throw like a ton of hints as to what was going on. Like, did anyone catch like the single frame Tyler's that popped up like within the first 20 minutes of the movie? Yes. There's yeah. like four different occasions. Okay. So yeah, there's like, you know, the first hint of like, you know, him popping up in those single frames. And then also while he's narrating, there's a line where he says, if I'm paraphrasing here, like, I don't know exactly what, like, what he said, but he says something like, you know, if you sleep long enough, can you wake up as a different person? 
And as he's saying that, he's like in the airport and the camera pans towards Tyler and they like focus on Tyler Durden when he's saying, you know, can you become someone else? And like, you know, when they're the, when they are in the airplane, you know, they have the same briefcase. Uh, when he called the payphone, there was no answer. But then, you know, when Tyler called back and they zoomed in onto the phone, the phone says, you know, like this payphone has no return calls or something like that. There's like a sign that says like the payphone does not receive calls. And when they were both get in the bus, only a single one, single one pays the fare. And um, oh, when they do the first fight in front of the uh, bar, like when the guys walk towards them for the first time, they are only looking at the narrator. They're not looking at Tyler. And uh, the fact that, you know, Tyler's always speaking for him. Mm -hmm. And like when he fought, when he fought, when it was said like punching himself in, in front of his boss, he was like, you know, I thought of Tyler when, the, when I was, you know, in this moment. Yet, you know, yet another hint. I feel like there's quite a lot of them out there. <laughs> I don't. I don't think it does a good enough job, even with those examples of. Of well, go ahead. I think. Yeah, I mean, those are good examples. Like, but I think the biggest problem was is that there's so many little contradictory things that pop up as well that just like cancel out any of that. I will admit yeah. that it's it was sort of a cop out how you know they said that you know sometimes. I am me, and sometimes I imagine myself looking at him, and I kind of just like, you know, we're supposed to, you know, that one line is supposed to like negate all the scenes when they're together. Yeah. Cop out. Yeah, we'll give you that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm on the same wavelength as Tay. Like, I, I just felt like there's way too many opposing moments where it's like, well, is I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you win, you get it. <laughs> But at the same time, doesn't it make the twist a lot better? Like, mm. you know, when the reveal happens that you didn't know that was the, you know, the big twist. Well, like, like if I you would have had so many hints and you would know what was happening, then it's not really that big of a chuck. Well, like I said, like the the twist is good. It's it's really good. But when I rewatched it, that's when I realized, like, oh, there's really like. The one thing about a twist in a movie is you go back and you rewatch it, or you know, late, maybe down the road or or the next day, like I did, and you see the right, you know, you see the little hints that they give you. Um, and when I was watching it, I was more so noticing the contradicting elements to the twist than anything else. Yeah, and like I, said, I you know, I knew the twist. This was my second time, so I was looking for hints and stuff and i was like yeah some of the i get you know i spotted some of the hints you pointed out callous but like I said the thing is yeah i mean i i noticed more contradictions that like well that one doesn't make sense <laughs> i think greedy was gonna say something earlier um uh it slipped my mind uh oh yeah yeah uh i every time i talk about this movie with people because we can all agree on that this is like one of those like cult movies like it's either you love it or you hate it there's like no yes. in between um then there's you no know, i talk to people that love the movie that are just like oh it's like not that great kind of movie um but they all say like oh you gotta watch it multiple times i fully understand the twist and i'm just like eh. <laughs> just like what it, what what i mean by that is just like if you tell me you gotta watch a movie multiple times to understand all the twists you know that's kind of a turn off for me well i mean to, to kind of rewind, I think that you don't have to watch the movie twice to understand the twist, because the, the twist is pretty well spelled out by the end of it. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't and think, I don't think you, I don't think like you need to. Even. I don't think you need yeah. to watch it twice to get the full gist of it, because, like, the first watch, when I watched it, I mean, like I said before, like, by the time that, you know, he was he found the plane tickets and stuff like that, I kind of realized what was going on. Um so I don't, I don't think that I needed to watch the movie twice, but I wanted to watch it twice because I, because I personally wanted to see what was there to give you uh, the hint here and there that that what's actually happening. But I don't personally think you actually do need to watch it twice to understand it fully. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I agree I, with that, but I'm just saying that yeah, people are just like, oh, you got to watch it multiple times. Yeah, most people usually are the people who actually don't understand what the movie's about. <laughs> yeah, yeah a, I feel like a there's a lot of different people who've latched on to this movie. Mm -hmm. There's yeah, that's why I was saying it's very cool. Like, 
yeah, I feel like this is a very complex movie. So like people get different things out of it. You know, some people say, oh, this movie's shallow. Other people say, oh, this movie's pretty deep. And people just like, they walk away with different things, with different messages, you know, having watched the movie. So yeah, it's a very much divisive of that way. And it's actually, what's funny is that the movie did get like a lot of terrible reviews when it first came out. Uh-huh. And it was, it was only later that it, you know, it shot into, you know, cult classicness and it became super popular and everyone started saying, you know, the first rule, you know, everyone knows about the first two rules of Fight Club. But what's amazing is that the largely the spoil, I mean, the, the spoiler hasn't really been spoiled. Like you guys didn't yeah. really know the spoiler was coming, right? No. I find that pretty amazing that 25 years later, you guys didn't know what the spoiler was. Because well, yeah. no one talks about it. <laughs> right. <Not supposed> to. <laughs> True. Yeah, and, and but, like I said, but, it's, know, it's like, a good twist. You don't you don't really like when you read the description of Fight Club and you th- like see the cover and whatever, and maybe you see like a a scene out of context here or there. You're like, oh, it's about dudes underground fighting. <laughs> but when you actually watch it, it's more about um, you know, it's more about dealing with uh, like uh, uh, mental stuff. It, it's more about uh, it's more of a breakdown of of, of, a, of a certain character, you know. It, I think I think too many people latch onto this and go and and just look at the fighting and the underground stuff and the cult stuff and they go, oh, that's that's cool, dude. I want to be just like these guys punching each other. But really, yeah. in the end, it's a tragedy. It's it's a tragic story of yeah. over masculinity. Uh, you know, it, it's, yeah. it's toxic it, masculinity. Yeah, it tox- yeah. I didn't want. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, the word escaped me, but. <laughs> And toxic. It's it's more of a story about the tragedy of toxic masculinity. I mean, the the part that obviously probably got to most people was when Bob got shot in the back of the head and his brain spilled oh. out. Like that's yeah. that's not cool. Yeah. That's not super masculine. Oh, he died, you know, being a terrorist. Like no, that's a sad moment. Like, and and even the narrator knows like this is fucked up. If something went wrong, and I think a lot of people tune that out because they just want the they want the macho masculine stuff. <laughs> Yeah, they don't care about the mental health stuff going on. Yeah, this is definitely like <laughs> I just call it the red flag movie. <laughs> if you're talking to a guy and he's like, "Yeah, Tyler Durden's like the coolest character of this movie," that's a red flag. Run away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like this is very similar to Scarface, to where like everyone you know idolized you know Scarface Al Pacino's character, and like, but in reality, he's just like he's very toxic and a screw up and. Uh, I feel like it's something similar is happening in this movie too, where like he, everyone kind of roots for Tyler Durden, even though he's, is the bad guy of the movie. Yeah, I mean they blow up like like five skyscrapers, you know? <laughs> empty. I'll give him that, but yeah. still, like, I mean those buildings, like they didn't all just fall, you know, straight down. Like there's some that were like starting to like wane and fall over and stuff. So there there was definitely some collateral. Yeah. There was definitely tons of collateral. People died. Okay, just because the buildings were empty doesn't mean somebody didn't die, you know? Yeah, and, like, I mean, those buildings collapsing. I mean, this was pre-9-11, so, you know, we have better understanding what happens when a skyscraper falls now. Um, yeah. yeah, there's definitely yeah. collateral damage there. And just the, you know, the whole, like, oh, yeah, we destroy the buildings, we destroy the debts, like, that. That's uh, not how, how that works. <laughs> they they have those records in multiple places. Yeah. And at this point, digit some of them probably digitally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the other oh. thing that I didn't really understand at the end, if we're there, um, when the narrator shoots himself in the head, like through his cheek, how did Tyler's back of his head get shot out? I, I don't understand how that works. Yeah, okay. I'm glad someone else was confused by that. Because <laughs> I, I, th- I thought the narrator just, you know, shot through the back of his head, too, and that's why he kind of slumped over. But And, and Tyler had the hole that's in a, it, you know, the, ex- the exit wound in his head. Well, that's Tyler was in his head, yes. and he knew that at that point, so he was envisioning the bullet going into the back of Tyler's head, but not the back of his head. Oh, okay. But And also, there's a connection to our, like... In the beginning of the movie, he he mentions how um, you know people really listen to you when they think you're dying, and you know mm-hmm. before he shot himself, he he said, "I want you to really listen to me, Tyler. You know my eyes are open. I don't know. I can't understand why he said my eyes are open. Maybe that's just his way of saying that okay, you are me, I am you. If my eyes are open, it means your your eyes are open. So if I shoot myself, you're gonna die. So maybe that was his hmm. psychological warfare to." Um, Try and kill Tyler. Interesting. 
So did he shoot Tyler? Or like I'm so yeah. confused. Though. No, he shot himself to kill Tyler. And okay. as Tay said, he envisioned <laughs> Tyler. I, it, that, that's a good description. He envisioned Tyler getting shot through the back of the head, which is what happened to Tyler. But to, in, in his case, he just shot himself through the cheek. Yeah. And also, that, that, everyone... that's how I always pictured it. So, I mean, it yeah. makes sense. It, it makes sense. I don't know why he actually has to shoot himself in order to visualize that, but. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I, really, I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, would would y'all have liked to have the narrator blast his braids out alongside Tyler, or are you happy with the ending? Yeah, I'm, happy with, I'm ending. happy with it. I feel yeah, like he finally got control back like of his life. I don't know, uh, does in he? a way, <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Well, I you know, um, he's definitely now. going to jail. He already confessed to the crime that happened. So. <laughs> Yeah, he's got like, yeah, this but, like terrorist he no longer has something else controlling his mind anymore. Like he's in control of it now, and yeah. he was willing to sacrifice jail time. He was willing to to plead his guiltiness. Yeah, to yeah, kind of, like, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah, but how many of those sleeper agents are out there? Like the three people in the police room, you know? Right. Yes. <laughs> what did Tyler say to them? You know. I love the, that scene, those couple of scenes where he's like going around different cities and he keeps running into people and they keep calling him sir and keep nodding at him. And <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Like that one scene when they were like in the coffee shop and he was like, oh yeah, the coffee is free. And then he looks into the, like the, the kitchen and like the three of the chefs like are just staring at him and just nod slowly at the same time. <laughs> I love <Yeah>. that scene. <laughs> well, I also like how he had to make sure that Marla's food was going to be clean too. <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> he knew that there was some conspiracy the killer at that point. And then, like when he put Marlon on the bus, you can see you can tell that the bus driver had like a black eye, so he didn't, you know, he's one of the members also. Yeah, I think you can also mm. see her like starting to get grabbed when she got the, the doors closed too. It, it was kind of in the shadows, but I'm pretty sure I saw her starting to get grabbed by people. Huh, I didn't notice that. Yeah, I didn't notice. Yeah, by the end of the movie, the the whole bus shows up anyway. So I won't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's kind of like it's kind of because if they were if they had orders to like kill her or whatever, well maybe they didn't. Maybe maybe they just they just were told to bring Marla to Tyler. I guess. Maybe. I don't know. Does does the cult know that he has multiple personalities at that point? Like after no, so. after Tyler is. After he tells them, like, I'm going to come to you and I'm going to say this. Don't listen to me or whatever. Mm. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, maybe. Guys, they would have started. I mean, in real life, yes, they would have started questioning. But in this movie, they were already <laughs> full-blown cult. So they didn't. They were just like, oh, he's going to be testing us. We got to make sure we do it right. I don't know. I mean, they knew he was crazy because, like, they were talking about how, oh, this Tyler Durden guy, he's a legend. You know, he only sleeps, like, one hour a night and this and that, and he's he's badass. So, like, they, they like, pretty much worship, worshipped him at that point, like, knowing he's mm -hmm. just bonkers. Yeah, especially at the end when they're like, whoa, he shot himself. That's badass or whatever they said. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Even up to the end. Yeah, it would, it would have been interesting to have like, maybe a little yeah. bit of an epilogue to, to see what happened after the skyscrapers got destroyed. Oh, actually, I was watching some uh, special uh, special features on the DVD just to see if I can find anything interesting. I didn't, but huh. I did discover there's like a graphic novel of like some of a like a sequel graphic novel of you know things that happened after the movie. So I'm very interested in acquiring that. Oh, yeah. Interesting. That'll solve. That'll answer my question. <laughs> well, I mean, this movie is based on a book. So that is maybe the true. book falls into it more. No. All the best movies are based on books. Mm-hmm. And I think the book, from what I've heard, it does a better job of spelling out that Tyler and the Fight Club is is bad. Well, the movie kind of. Makes it seem so cool. Yeah, I guess it kind of glorifies the violence yeah. a little bit. 
Um, but it also like shows the violence. It, like I said before, like in a, in a sort of realistic way, like it looks like these people are actually getting their shit, the shit beat out of them. You know, it's a, yeah. when I watch the movie, like I don't go like, Oh, that fight scene was cool. I go, Whoa, that fight scene was disturbing. Right. <laughs> Except because, for Jackie Chan movies. Those well, fight scenes are cool. <laughs> yeah, in the context of this movie, I would say the fight scenes are uh, the Jackie Chan movie. Yeah, the fight scenes are cool because you can tell it's it's fake. You know, it's, it, there's not like there's not like uh, giant bruises on people and and the makeup department going ham with blood and stuff like that in the Jackie Chan <laughs> movies. Um, which is, I guess, the defining difference between like an action fan and like a, a Fight Club fan, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, when, yeah, I think a lot of people who watch this movie watch those fight scenes and go, "Dude, that was so brutal. That was so cool." Where I go, and mm-hmm. probably other other people as well, if you want to say, I go, "Yeah, yes. that was that was pretty br- gruesome and kind of dis- kind of disgusting by the end," you know. Yeah, well, and I, like I guess it just know. depends on the person watching it how they perceive it. Yeah. Well, you got, like I said, the toxic toxic masculinity people, you know, they're just like, oh, look how masculine these people are. I want to be like them. I'm going to go start my own fight club. <laughs> and the first night, one of them gets their head cracked open and that's it. Because yeah. <laughs> they're like, look at all these. Look at this guy getting his his head shoved into the concrete. He lived. Well, not Jimmy over there. Jimmy Jimmy is in a neck brace <laughs> for the rest of his life. Yeah. <laughs> and brain dead. Yeah, there were some of some scenes that were a little bit nauseating. Normally, I can take gory stuff like it doesn't bother me much. But like as of late, I think like as I've gotten older, for some reason now it's just it's icky. I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah. When yeah. when like Tyler jumps on top of Lou and he's like dripping blood over his face, oh. like can you see a guy in the background throwing up. <laughs> yeah, I was like, it's... same, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was yeah, awful. Definitely, as I've grown older, it's like because recently Greedy Waffles and I watched uh, Saving Private Ryan when it came back in the movie theaters. And when I was a kid, it's like, whoa, this is so cool, dude. And you watch it now, and it's like, damn, this is sad. <laughs> like, this, this is yeah. crazy. <laughs> um, Could not be me. So, I mean, yeah, as we get older, I think a lot of our tastes change, both in movies and just, um, you know, mindset. And I, I yeah. think if I had watched this movie back when I was like, I don't know, 15 or 16, I probably would have said, oh, well, this is fucking cool, dude. Um, <laughs> because that's just kind of how you are. You know, you, you see the fighting and the stuff. That's all you really care about. You don't care about the story. You don't care about the characters when you're young. Um, but now, when I'm older, at least, I can ap- I, I can appreciate movies more for the character, the action, the whatever you know I, I, it's all a package now instead of it just being like well this movie's boring because there's no fighting in it so l movie <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah, i used to feel like that when i was very young <laughs> lots of maturity to factor in there <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean when i watch this younger he would have came to my house and been like grady punch me i'm yeah. like what <laughs> <laughs> i'd be like huh <laughs> Oh, All right. Um, uh, oh, did uh, anyone catch the uh, the flashback humor, like when when Teller had the gun, like inside the narrator's mouth? Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's like, I still don't have anything to say. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well. yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, flashback humor. <laughs> I love how this movie breaks the fourth wall in like subtle ways, or in yeah. not so subtle ways. <laughs> yeah, it's not really subtle, but it is. <laughs> they do subtle. a good job. It's it's a better job than than Deadpool in my opinion. Like that, that <laughs> Deadpool is maybe a bit too on the nose, but a movie like this that kind of sprinkles it in there just enough um, does a good job. And I'm sure, yeah, and I'm sure that greedy try to pause it, you know, when the uh, when it showed the giant penis in frame, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, the whole no. the whole idea of um, the splicing together the film reels was actually pretty interesting but it did make me wonder like oh was was the narrator just doing that the whole time <laughs> like yeah, was he splicing yeah, in the pornography yeah. <laughs> sure was <laughs> um, but yeah i like how uh there's that one scene where like the film reel starts to show up on screen when when tyler's mm-hmm. like i don't know what is he giving the monologue yeah i thought that was a really cool effect and then 
of course, later in the movie, they do splice in like the one millisecond of some dude's schlong, hairy fucking schlong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> Anyone have this? anything else? What was uh, everyone's favorite scene, if you need a second? Mine was probably the scene where uh, the narrator is kind of beating himself up in the office, to, and uh, he makes it look like the the like manager or whatever was beating them up. I thought that was uh, yeah. really well done, like both cinematically and like narratively. I thought it was really well done. And at that time, I didn't know that I didn't think that Tyler was uh, the narrator. So when he said the line that Callus said earlier, where he was like, oh, I was thinking of Tyler when I was doing this, I just thought of like, oh, well, he was being punched by Tyler. He's thinking of, you know, what would happen if Tyler was fighting me right now. Now, in yeah, context, my, it makes more sense, but, you know. Yeah, mine yeah. is uh, similar. I, I like the homework uh, scenes where they're all trying to, uh, like, find people to fight. And the guy with the hose is, oh, like, yeah, trying to funny. get the guy to... He's like, stop fighting me, man. He's like, fight me. <laughs> well, yeah, Did you notice how that, that preacher, like, that, you know, he was trying to fight. In the next scene, he shows up in the fight club. Like, he became part of the fight club. <laughs> I actually didn't didn't notice that. I mean, I knew that the preacher was the one who started fighting the guy with the hose because that's like a juxtaposition. But uh, yeah, I didn't notice yeah, that, that was he was also guy. in the fight he, club. Yeah, I love when he says sorry after he punches him. <laughs> 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 like that would be me. <laughs> I guess my favorite scene would be like when he's running all over the country trying to find Tyler, and uh, like that whole scene that culminated in him like. You know, in the big reveal and him actually finding out that, you know, that was a, that was a very well done. That's good. If I had to pick. Uh, oh, it's, it's the scene with the penguin. Oh, yeah. The, his happy Why? place in his cave. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I don't really have a favorite thing, but I like penguins. <laughs> so I'll go with that. <laughs> I like <laughs> I just realized we had back-to-back -back movies where the guy, where the person, tries to find the narrator. How funny! Mm -hmm. Not back-to-back. -back. Her and this movie. Maybe back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back then, because Stranger Than Fiction, kind of the same way. Yeah. Her, I mean, he's not really trying to find the. He he knows where she is. She, he, she's just not saying anything. No spoilers. <laughs> we'll, we'll say back to back to back. I think that makes more sense because Stranger Than Fiction, Will Ferrell's trying to find the narrator the whole time, and in yeah. her, yeah, sure, uh, Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix is trying to find Scarlett Johansson, and in this movie, yeah, the the narrator is trying to find himself essentially. Yeah. <laughs> Ray, did you have a favorite scene? Uh, <laughs> I'll be honest, y'all. Or maybe a least favorite I... scene. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> That's uh, so many. Of those. <laughs> I have two. I have two of those for sure. Uh, the first one, the the burn on the hand. Mm. Um, mm. Hated that. That was rough. Yeah. Um, second, probably when he's like looking over Lou and like those just that insane face with the blood running down. It's just oh, <laughs> toxic. Um, yeah, I personally, this is not one that I, I pick to watch, which is why I've only seen it now twice, but mm -hmm. I have a lot of respect for it and how it was done, if that makes sense. So like, eh, it's not my, not in my wheelhouse of, of entertainment, but I do respect it a lot. Yeah. I'm kind of the same boat. You know, like, you know, the acting was really good and like certain things about it really good. But story over, overall and everything, I'm just like, eh, no, it doesn't doesn't work for me. I, if it I wasn't think... so bloody, pulpy, disgusting as <laughs> I, <laughs> I'd be like, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's that's part of the charm, I guess, for me yeah. is, um, you know, it feels real, it feels grounded um, a lot of the time, even if even if some of the things with Tyler don't make a lot of sense in the grand scheme of things. Um, so I, I do think pretty highly of it, just because it it you know, like. Maybe I wouldn't watch it again. I don't feel like I need to watch it again now that I've seen it one in like a half times, you know. Um, <laughs> but it is it is a movie that um, 
like just like you, I respect it. I the 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 art is there, and mm-hmm. um, there's a reason for the movie. Obviously, uh, even even if the message has been muddled through time, I, I think that the main the main message is good. Where it's like, hey, <laughs> you know, get help if you have a, a, yeah. a disorder or a mental disability. You know, Do you really think that's the, the ex- message? Well, I think that for? I think mental health is a message that's in there for sure, and I I think that's the one that spoke out the most especially towards the end (laughs) when shit was hitting the fan um Mm -hmm. or maybe maybe more towards the beginning when when things are just starting like he he hits rock bottom and and whatever but yeah i feel like mental health is a big is a big aspect is a big part of this movie um alongside the craziness (laughs) yeah that's like it it falls back to what i was saying how like different people get different things out of this movie and like, it really depends on your like your own perspectives and like what you get out of the movie because you know yes. some people say yeah there's a message about you know there's definitely a message about i mean this movie definitely has like lots of different messages so it really depends on which one you pick up on it is a very complex movie and i personally think it's a um, complex movie with all these different messages but at the base of it all is just trying to be like a dark comedy with some like very disturbing scenes, but you know it's also just trying to have fun with it, you know. I mean, there's definitely a message there, and it's it's not just trying to be a dark comedy. Like, I like I've I think I've read quotes from the author, and like that he actually doesn't like the movie that much because it loses the message. It's not as clear. Oh, yeah. we're talking about the movie then, right? Message from the book. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like I said, I haven't read the book or anything. I've just read snippets from the author and stuff. And there definitely is supposed to be a message, but the movie doesn't do necessarily the best job of conveying what that message is supposed to be, which is part of the problem. Yeah, maybe, maybe it just has too yeah, many. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. Trying to like the movie... Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, the movie doesn't really try too hard to like give a message. It's just like trying to be... Trying to be impactful with its with its scenes and like the the twist and you know all these different things going on. Or maybe there was never a message all along, and we're all reading too far into this one. Mm. I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> yes. But I think perspective is the biggest piece of the puzzle here. I think that, and they're, like they're, we have five people here, and I think most of us see the movie a little bit differently, or a lot differently. Um, and I think that's just I think that's a testament to just how universal the movie is like just how any, any like any, any given any, any different any given person could have a different perspective on this movie um whether it be in a negative light or a positive light um and i think that not a lot of movies out there have this much like differences of opinion across the board i think this it's pretty unique in that case where a lot of people can get a lot of different things out of it. Yeah, yeah. which makes it a great podcast movie to talk about. Let's all give a round of applause to Callus. Hey. Way to go, Callus! Hey. Thanks. <laughs> Everyone thought we weren't going to talk about the number one rule. Yeah. Or the, the number, number one, rule. or the movie about the number one rule. <laughs> <laughs> the number one and two rule. Yeah, so I but, looked it up. Um... Yeah, I get the main, you know, which I do see that in the movie as well. But the main, you know, thing was to not be as materialistic and consumerism and anti-capitalism, which is like, yeah, okay, that was there. That's yeah, that's a huge message in the movie. (laughs) Yeah, you got to be free from all this stuff. Yeah, although I don't know the direct quote from the author, or if that's just people's interpretation of it. So yeah, that just uh, reminded me of the other quote that you know, you are not. You know, what you eat, you are not your khakis, you are not what you watch and this and that. You are like, well, at the end he says you're all singing, all dancing, crap of the world, but that's not really true either. You are like, you are what you decide to do with your time, you know, like what you focus on, who you surround yourself with, that's who you really are. Yeah. Well, all right. Anyone else have anything they want to bring up about the movie or should we move on to the final thoughts and rating? One final thing. Oh. One final thing. I was mm-hmm. looking at the the booklet that came with the uh, the special edition DVD, and there's like a whole bunch of quotes from, uh, 
reviewers from critics and just like bagging on them we just saying how terrible it is like one of the, one of the reviews from la times says uh, from the new times la says uh a wit no no wait yeah from la times sorry <laughs> a witless mishmash of whiny infantile philosophy philosophizing and bone crunching violence that actually thinks it's saying something significant wow or another one that says <laughs> yeah, from, the, <laughs> from the new times la fight club is to intelligent men what catherine braillette's romance is to intelligent women an insult hmm. and there's like a ton of these <laughs> quotes just bashing the movie which is pretty funny Yeah, it, it, trying to put yourself in the mindset of those critics is is really hard. Sometimes, I guess for me, it's it's really hard. Because um, in general, yeah, like what if you watch this movie just without really thinking too far into it? In general, it's a good movie anyway. You know, it's just like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, was, I don't. For me, I, like some of those reviews, I'm like, yeah, no, I can I can totally get that. <laughs> like I can get how they got to that point. And that's the beauty of Fight Club. Me and Tay can't can't really be on the same page with that. <laughs> we better fight about it. I'll throw the fight, first. Fight. I'll, I'll throw the first punch and then quit. <laughs> In the ear. Well, I'm gonna have to punch you back. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll run. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you eventually. <laughs> Yeah, that's one of the rules, though. Like, if you're new there, you have to fight. Like, what if you just throw one punch and, and then say, I give, I'm done. Yeah. Could you do that? I mean, or do you no have to fight until... That. Yeah, yeah. Do you have to fight until you're, like, dead? Or can you just be like, and I'm in the ring, and I'm out? Yeah, I mean, they said, you know, until someone taps out, so... I'm tapping was... as soon as I enter. <laughs> they, oh, they, they, they taste out. They tap immediately. Yeah. yeah. They'll probably they kick you out of the club. Right? And then punch a, a bunch. <laughs> yeah, they'll take you all back. <laughs> the rules don't apply. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just picturing Gammy like he throws the first punch and then like throws himself to the floor and just starts tapping right away. <laughs> so <laughs> not even get hit once. <laughs> now that's he goes in. Can visualize. He goes in, <laughs> punch someone in the face, does a high pitch scream and a jump at the same time, and runs away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just wouldn't go. I feel like this sounds like the stupidest thing ever. I'm not doing this shit. Oh yeah, I mean yeah. <laughs> if, if it was the real world, I I definitely would not be anywhere near that. But yeah, yeah you can't it, destroy this people's face. Although they have been like news reporting stuff, like real actual underground fight clips popping up. Yeah, well, I'm I'm sure there's people who would love to punch each other in the face. I'm just not one of those people. I don't you know I don't generally okay. like pain. So. You know. <laughs> I mean, we also have like boxing and wrestling and MMA. There's outlets, yeah, sure. There's outlets for it, and even those. I mean, I guess not MMA, but even like boxing and stuff has pads and stuff. I mean, I, could, would I box someone more so over fist fighting someone? You know? <laughs> like... Yeah, agreed. <laughs> agreed. Uh, I do like the, uh, there's one thing that actually just reminded. I don't know what reminded me of it. Um, or they're like pointing out a Calvin Klein ad and they're like. Look at that. That's not a real man. And then the immediate next scene is Brad Pitt taking off his shirt, and he looks exactly like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, yeah, there we go. That, that's a mixed message, maybe, or intentional. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and also, Brad Pitt never wears underwear. Mm. Like, you can see many scenes with, with that shirt where his, like, pants are very low, and you don't see any underwear at all. Mm. I, you I would didn't see that. that. Yes. <laughs> or not see that. <laughs> Kyle's is like, if you pause the movie at one hour, 15 minutes, 13 <laughs> seconds, five milliseconds, you can see the outline of Brad Pitt's cock. <laughs> and he's calling me out for the dick? God. <laughs> there all no really pause there. <laughs> Just, just admiring the male figure. Talk. He's like, wow, what a work of art. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Brad, Brad Pitt did look good in this movie, real. though. I, you gotta oh, say, yeah. like, he, um, I don't know if he normally is ripped, but if not, he did a lot of work to, you know, 
put his yeah. body in that situation. <laughs> I feel like his younger self, he was always ripped like that. At least in most of his movies. Work. Yeah, I think he did put in the work for this movie in particular. Yeah, I don't think it yeah. was a transformation like Chris oh. Pratt to Guardians of the Galaxy, but yeah. it's, he definitely yeah. had the, you know, it's not easy to keep a six pack, even if, even if you're toned. Or, or like Christian Bell from The Machinist to Batman Begins, to where yeah, he went from like really one ten to, to really two twenty. Yeah. yeah. And then to the movie, a few movies later, where he was just obese. <laughs> <laughs> that man puts his body through hell for movies. Yeah, jo- Joaquin Phoenix with the Joker. He had to like get really, really skinny for that oh, movie, yeah. and then. I think the next one he was relatively plump. I think it was Bo was afraid. So. Yeah, actors, actresses put their bodies through a lot. You know, people don't think about yeah. it, but you know, when you see them on screen, like you know, take a take a look a year a year ago, they they definitely their body type probably has changed for the role. Yeah. Speaking of body types, um the reason why Meatloaf was wearing a shirt, even though one of the rules is you got to take off your shirt, is because they wanted to hide his fat suit. <laughs> I figured. That makes sense. <laughs> well, yeah. His his titty suit. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if Meatloaf has acted in a lot of um, roles. I thought he did pretty good in this he, role, all things considered. Yeah, he was he was like in a bunch of movies back then. I don't know if this counts, he but was... he's been on a lot of episodes of Ghost Hunters. Oh really? Oh, yeah, really? <laughs> yeah. That counts. Yeah. Oh, that's all. Awesome. Wait. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hold on. <laughs> I thought. Okay. Never mind. I thought you were saying that as like some sort of joke first. <laughs> no, I know. Because... <laughs> I'm being that serious. <laughs> okay. No. Rest in peace, though. Meatloaf. Oh, did he pass? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the story is he was so afraid of COVID that he didn't leave even to get the vaccine. And then once stuff started opening back up, he got COVID and unfortunately passed away. Mm-hmm. And I wrote in a Yemi server when he passed away, his name was Robert Paulson. His name was Robert Paulson. Aww. And I didn't Too understand it Yemi? back then. <laughs> now I, I got to search that now on the Discord to see how many times you said it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been curious to see if I to find out. But yeah, very sad. Yeah. All right. Let's wrap it up here. Callus, why don't you give us a head start with the final review and rating out of five? Me first. Oh, boy. All right. So, um, so yes, this is a movie that I really enjoyed, and I watched a bunch when I was a kid. Obviously, you know, I, had, I owned the DVD and then eventually also had the Blu-ray, even though I lost it. But, yeah, nowadays... Um, even though I enjoyed revisiting it, like it's probably been like 10 years since I watched it. I did find like a lot of the scenes very disturbing, but, uh, at the same time, like, you know, some of the funny scenes, I don't know, I find myself laughing and like really enjoying and it is like a very interesting and well shot movie and, uh, scenes that were in the major uncomfortable are, you know, built like that by design. So, you know, the, the movie serves its purpose and I feel like it holds up really well. And uh, yeah, it's probably not a movie I'm gonna rewatch. Maybe like in a couple of years I'll rewatch it, but yeah, it's probably it's not one that I'm willing to rewatch too soon, like I was when I was younger. But overall, I would give it a four out of five. Okay. Yeah, um, I think that this is. I, I let, let me just start this off by saying I don't think any of these characters in this movie should be a role model for anyone. Um, I don't condone anything that happened in this movie. Yeah, we haven't done that. That part. being said, I really liked it. I, I I really enjoyed it. It starts off a little bit slow, um, but once it gets kind of rolling, once once Tyler gets introduced, uh, once the main plot gets started, uh, it doesn't it, you know it, when it doesn't feel meandering. It, it really does hit and and run and. Um, I obviously didn't get the same thing out of it as other people did, but 
what I did get out of it was just a really well done movie, excellently shot movie, great effects. Well, not not great effects like CG, but like great practical effects. Like the fighting felt real, it felt visceral at times. Uh, outside the fight scenes when, you know, it was a lot of like in the house or around town, like the the scenes were interesting, they were well shot. There was interesting camera angles and interesting things happening. Um, by the end, it gets a bit bombastic, and maybe it doesn't make as uh, a ton of sense the tw- in terms of like the the twist when you when you think about it or rewatch it. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was I thought it was really good. Um, and see, I can't I can't put it higher than Callus though. I'm gonna go with a four as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was actually thinking of giving it a four point five. All right, let's go. Let's shake on it. Four point five. Yes, I, I think it's a four point five. All right, I do. I think it's a four point five too. <laughs> I twist they shook with their dicks. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, going off what they said. Um, yeah, the movie starts off really slow. Um, takes a while. Like I said earlier in the podcast, is like, was I even watching the right movie? Um. So I was, that kind of kind of threw me off a little bit, but once you get going, once the movie does get going, it's it's a fun watch. Um, it, I do enjoy how some of the scenes, and some of the scenes are just brutal. I'm just like, what the heck? Um, some uh, confusion. Um, like like I understand what people mean by now that like you have to at least watch it twice. Um, or if you're as awesome as yummy, you don't have to watch it twice. Um, but I see where they're coming from when they say uh, you got to watch it multiple times. Um, I probably won't watch it mul- or watch it again. Like, I'm not going to watch it again. It was what I, I, I will watch it again, but down the road. That's the word I'm trying to look for. Down the road. Um, that being said, um, <clears throat> I'm going to give it a three and a half. Okay. Um, as for me, like, the acting and everything, like, Everything about the movie itself, like the acting, cinematography, you know, all that, was solid. Um, the movie's a little like scatterbrain, in my opinion. Like, kind of, it, you know, it has it's trying to do multiple messages. I feel like, and none of them really hit great. And just overall, like story wise, I'm just like, eh, I don't, I don't care for it. It's not my type. And. But, but since it is like it's it, you know well done and everything, um, I have to give it at least a three, even though I will probably never watch it ever again if I can help it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's fair. Um, I'm gonna take my my feelings over violence out of this just because I don't feel like that would be fair for um, the rating of the actual movie itself. I thought it was really really well done um i like movies that make you think a little bit and that you can pull different meanings from uh from the storyline itself and i think it is kind of really cool that we all got something different out of it um acting was great um the score i will be honest didn't really pay much attention to i was trying to focus more on like the movie itself but the part oh, yeah, we did. didn't talk about the music. <laughs> <at all. laughs> yeah. The part that I did like pay attention to, I really enjoyed it. Um, I think it's kind of fitting that there wasn't a lot of music to it. Um, kind of, it kind of takes you out of like a movie perspective and like into real life type situations. But um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a, a four out of five just for you know cinematic purposes alone. But with my feelings, probably a two. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to go like uh, halfway and do like three to you know? No, because I feel like it's better than that. I feel like it's it's like as a movie, it's better than that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna mm. stick to stick to it. Oh, well, right. Yeah, widespread for this for this uh, rating here, which we don't like normally I said, see. It's a, it's a cult kind of movie. It's either oh. you on one yeah. end or the other. <laughs> Well, we have two people right down the middle, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Cinematog- like I said, yeah, cinematography wise and just as a film, it was well done. I just don't care for story and stuff, so right in the middle. So, Callus, usually people on the podcast uh, sneak in their recommendation for a future episode. Um, 
<laughs> Did you have a movie in mind that you would like to put on the list? I have a few movies in mind, but actually I will be emailing you my uh, email fan request. Wow. Yes, I will we, use the email. We never use yeah. that. <laughs> well, then I will be the first. <laughs> Actually, actually, you will if you do actually. Email <laughs> <laughs> laugh, do though. it, do it. Yes, How email is it message dot. you in Discord saying, "Hey, I emailed you," and you'll check the email and find out that people have been using it for years. You just I check it check. every like, week. The only thing I ever get like, is like updates is from you? Spotify. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Gotcha. Okay. People are screaming. Where's my uh, <laughs> my recommendation? Yes. This is a good one. I will though. be sending an email to ff.filmfreakswithac at gmail.com. Thank you, Callus. And also, you, if you aren't Callus and you don't want to email, uh, you can also talk in the Ferret Nation Discord in the movie stuff section to recommend a movie or comment on the latest episode of Film Freaks with a Z at the end. Just like, uh, well, or you, you know, and you can possibly come on the podcast just like Callus here um, if you're a part of the Discord. Uh, we're well, always looking for boom. Yeah, you have to. You have to recommend a movie first. Right. You got to recommend a movie, and then you might be able to get on. Um, mm-hmm. you, we're, all, we're always looking for recommendations, you know, not just from ourselves, but from the outside world, see what you want us to watch. So please keep sending them in. We got a good list right now, but we could always use more. Speaking of more and recommendations, I have a question for all of you. Uh, DC or Marvel? Mm. Marvel for me. Marvel, yeah. Are we talking comics or movies? DC or Marvel? So, so I imagine it's it's movies because it's a movie podcast, right? Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's fair, but I mean no, I just, it's I just, just a sure. Marvel. DC. I might want Marvel, even comics wise. Marvel. For oh, me. I might want a DC because I you know not too well versed in the DC universe. Wait, do I get a vote since I'm the guest? Sure, you can be. Well, if you vote. It might be a tie, but we'll, we'll see. What? Because oh, I was thinking of voting DC. <laughs> I'll. Aw, oh, suck. Um. Well, is he, he might... <laughs> Do what you want. He thinking of like recommending a animated DC movie, which those a lot of those are great. Those are better for sure. Marvel I mean, or DC. This is hard. I. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say DC. I gotta say DC. DC. I gotta say DC. So we got yeah. three DCs, one Marvel. No, two, two and two. I thought, Greedy, didn't you say DC? Because you were like, I know Marvel. Well, I never officially switch, but <laughs> okay. I'll switch to DC because I, I hope it's some DC movie I haven't seen. So if it, it's if it's Batman vs <laughs> Superman, I'm gonna go over there and punch you. Well, it's funny you bring that up because <laughs> no. I was oh. thinking of recommending just a generally bad movie because we have we have never really done that. And there's a lot of bad movies that are just kind of boring or dumb, but there's some bad movies that are so bad that they're kind of good. And they're I was fun. thinking about it, like, you know, what 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 movie Ooh. could be really, really described as so bad that it's kind of good? Um, so I landed on either the Marvel movie that I was going to suggest, which was Daredevil, or Batman and Robin from 1997, directed by Joel Schumacher. <laughs> um, so this is, of course, uh, a sequel to a sequel to a sequel. Um, and the, it's just a sequel. The, this, yeah, no, it's, a, it's three sequels. Get it's me. the third sequel, yes? I had made a pact with myself to never see this movie. <laughs> well, you got to watch it now, buddy. Wait, it's you've time. never seen it before? I've never seen it before because I just it's heard time. how bad it was. It's time, Tay. Oh, no, you need to. You, want, you have to. <laughs> the synopsis for the... Well, maybe this will change your mind, Tay. Okay, the synopsis. Along with crime-fighting partner Robin and new recruit Batgirl, Batman battles the dual threat of frosty genius Mr. Freeze and homicidal horticulturist Poison Ivy. Freeze plans to put Gotham on ice while Ivy tries to dive a wedge between the dynamic duo... Are you sold now? Oh, I'm, I'm familiar with the plot of the movie. I've seen clips and stuff. Yeah, but did you hear that big word, horticulturist? <laughs> yeah, I'm familiar with the whole horticulturist. This, uh, well, maybe this will change your mind. This star is George Clooney, Chris O'Donnell, Uma Thurton, Thur- Thurman, wow. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Whoa. Alicia Whoa. Silverstone, Michael Goh, Vivica A. Fox, and John Glover, to name a few. 
let's kick mm. some ice. Mm, I see, I see. I didn't know John uh, Glover was in it, so okay, fine, sure. <laughs> okay. What year was it? 19... 1997. Yeah, that's what I thought. So, as you may have not again, this is an infamous movie. I've watched it a, a, a lot when I was a kid, uh, but I always knew that it was so bad that it was kind of good, right? Um, but maybe it'll be just so bad that it's bad, uh, but I guess we'll have to <laughs> wait and see until the next episode airs in two weeks. We'll reconvene and talk about Batman and Robin from 1997. Um, and you can find this on Amazon, Apple, Google, YouTube, etc. Or Personally, if you're like me and that's... you randomly have a copy, a physical copy, uh, there you go. <laughs> oh, you have it? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, personally, I think that Batman Forever is the movie that's so bad it's good, and Batman and Robin is probably just bad. Sorry. <laughs> that, was, that was my my understanding as well. The problem with that is that uh, the Riddler, Jim Carrey, actually really good. He's not bad. <laughs> he's good. So that's that's the main thing right there. Arnold Schwarzenegger is trying so hard. well. Actually, we'll talk about you know, we'll talk about it next time. We'll talk uh, about that. Next time. I'll say this gas is crazy. <laughs> But... Oh, the, yeah, the gas is crazy, let me tell you. <laughs> Almost as crazy as this movie. The synopsis is a woman, we have two poor people, one trying to solve global warming, one trying to, they're both trying to solve like global warming, and we're rooting for the billionaire who's beating them up. <laughs> hold, hold. We'll watch the movie and then we'll reconvene and talk about it. All right, sounds good. Callus, thank you for coming on today. It was a pleasure Yay. having you on, and also thank you again for the recommendation. Yeah, thank you for having me. I had a lot of fun talking about this movie, revisiting it. It was great. And, Callus, there's actually a new section to the end of the podcast, if you don't know, called Small Recommendations. Do you have a small recommendation for the audience? I have heard of this, yes. Um... If you need time to uh, think, uh, we, we can maybe fill you in here. Yeah, I had one written down. Uh, go ahead and talk, and I'll come back to me later. <laughs> well, I have been watching a show called The Floor, and I was originally very turned off. But when I started watching it, I'm actually kind of hooked. Uh, it's a game show where <laughs> two people duel back and forth on a, on a single topic, and whoever gets the most, you know, the uh, whoever um, doesn't lose... <laughs> gets their piece of the floor and they try and get the biggest piece of the floor and whoever is at the end of it all wins like a million dollars but you get a hundred thousand dollars every every episode if you have the most pieces it's been actually really wow. fun i'm actually really enjoying it it's on hulu if you want to watch it nice. cool. i've seen commercials for it but i honestly thought it looked really ridiculous yeah the, the commercials <laughs> don't do it justice like the actual the actual show is is pretty good Interesting. Because the commercials also turned me off. I was like, what the fuck are they doing? You know, like Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but when you actually watch it in in practice and play along, it's it's very fun. Huh. Okay, I have my recommendation. I'm ready. Out of Time, starring Denzel Washington. I feel like not many people know about this movie, but it's very underrated. And like no one talks about this, but it's actually really good. It's about this uh Detective guy. Oh no, he's not a detective. He runs. What's it called when he when you run a police station? Is it a commissioner? He, yes. Commissioner. Yeah, he yeah. basically runs a police station in a very small town, so there's like very few cops, and like a crime happens, and like there's some people that died, and like literally every clue points to him. So he's mm. like simultaneously trying to hide the clues that lead to him while trying to solve it while trying to you know. <laughs> it sounds like a good recommendation. His own, while everyone else is trying to solve it, and like he's trying to keep everyone away from his own track, you know. Wow, <laughs> that's stressful. a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very stressful movie. Yes, <laughs> it's like a lot of uh, you know close calls type of that stuff. Sounds really good though. Yeah, sounds cool. It does have like a weak final act, but the journey together is really fun. Well, thanks for sharing. Yeah. Okay. I have nothing to share. Nothing. I haven't been yeah, you don't either. doing anything. Um, I just recommend, especially if you're stressed, do um, if you have Spotify or like I'm sure there's something on YouTube too, but um, just listening to like spa meditation music and just like breathe for a minute, 
I've been doing that a lot lately, and it is very, uh, very soothing. It's very mind um, calming, and it's very positive. Do you have any breathing tips? Yes, uh, breathe um, in and breathe out. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the exact same thing. You actually like inhale for five seconds, hold it for three, and exhale five seconds. Yeah, got it. Cool. Thank you. Yep. See, after, after this movie, I thought you were saying, I recommend therapy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that too. Yeah, yeah. therapy is great. Therapy is great. All right. Well, this has been another episode of Film Freaks with a Z. Thank you to everyone who is watching or listening, whether you're on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, etc. We appreciate you. I am Yemi the Ferret, and I've been here with... Uh, greedy Face. Yeah, that's what I was. Thing nation. Uh, ray of positivity. I don't remember. Oh, was the tech. I don't know. Ray of positivity. <laughs> Detective Ray. Yeah, I think that's what you said. <laughs> I think so too. And Callus. I am Jack's obsession with blue, aka Callus. And this has been another episode of Film Freaks with a Z. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.